class. Welcome back. I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. In the previous video, we went over material price variances, material quantity variances, and in this video, we're going to go over the labor rate variance and the labor efficiency variance. So just like materials, labor also has some standards. We need to know what the standard amount uh, of, of hours that go into each of our product and what that standard labor rate is. So we're going to use the same information from the previous video in that we're going to be manufacturing jars of salsa. So in this example, the standard amount is 0.1 hours and our standard labor rate is $15 per hour. So those are our standards. Now let's take a look at what actually happened so we can calculate these variances. So first of all, we're gonna do the labor rate variance, LRV, labor rate variance. And we're gonna take our actual hours times the actual rate and compare that. Since it's the rate variance, our hours need to stay the same. And then we're calculating the variance associated with the rate. So the rate is what changes. So we've got pure actual on this side. And then here we're going to be changing the rates so that we can calculate the variance associated with the rate. So let's assume that we used 980 hours and our actual rate was $16. So then once again, our actual hours were 980 and our standard, like we said at the beginning, is $15 per hour. So you can see here that our actual rate was higher. Okay, now, what we're using here are just, you know, our averages, what we think the labor rate's going to be. Sometimes it can be higher because maybe at this point, maybe most of our employees have been around for a while and their wages have gone up, their, their labor rate has gone up. And so that's what this might reflect, that it's some of our more experienced laborers working on these jars of salsa. So anyway, let's multiply these out. 980 times 16 gets us 15,680. 980 times 15 gets us 14,700. The difference between these is $980. And like we said, our standard was 15, our actual was 16. So this actually gave us an unfavorable rate of uh, 980. Now let's move on to our labor efficiency variance. The labor efficiency variance follows kind of the same pattern as our uh, materials quantity variance and that we're going to have um, standard hours allowed times the standard rate because we're going to be calculating the difference between this and this. So you can see here we're taking our actual and overall then we're comparing it all to the standard. So in this case here, we're going to take the actual hours times standard rate and compare that to the standard hours allowed times the standard rate. Well, we have our standard rate, so let's plug that in. The rate's not changing. What's changing is our hours, so that's the efficiency. To calculate standard hours allowed, we need to have how many jars did we actually manufacture? So we actually manufactured 9,900 jars. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, I said each jar we thought was gonna need 0.1 hours of labor. That was our standard. So we're gonna take the actual number of jars and say each one should have used per our standard 0.1 hours, which gets us 990 hours that we thought we were going to need. So then we take the 990 times our standard rate. So this is our standard hours allowed, what we thought we were going to need to manufacture those jars. And that gets us 14,850. So now we're going to compare that to our actual hours times standard rate, which was 14,700. And that gets us a difference of 150. So our standard hours allowed were 990 hours but we actually used 980, we used fewer hours. So that gives us a favorable variance because we didn't use as many hours. Okay, so let's take a look at all of this put together, right? So 
our labor rate was actually higher. So we thought, well, probably some of our more experienced laborers worked on this batch, on this amount of salsa. So that caused us to have an unfavorable variance associated with the rate because they were being paid more money. But on the other hand, since we have more experienced laborers, then what happened over here would make sense that we didn't use as many hours as we thought because they're more experienced. They don't need as much time to manufacture uh, those jars of salsa. So we didn't use as many hours, so we got a favorable rate. Now in this case here, we can take these two together and get our overall labor variance. All right, so we've got our labor rate variance, our labor efficiency variance. In this case, since they're different, this is a favorable, this is an unfavorable. When they're different, then you need to subtract them. So that gets us 830. And then what you do is you look, well, which one's the bigger one? The unfavorable was the bigger one. So that would be an unfavorable variance overall for labor. All right, class, this is a little bit tricky, but it does make sense. So make sure that you look and see what we're calculating here and really try to understand what these formulas are and since this is the labor rate in our example, what's gonna change is the rate. Over here, it's the efficiency, so it's the hours that are gonna change. And the other tricky part is the standard hours allowed. Almost always, you're gonna to need to calculate that. And that's taking the, the standard amount for just one, and then you multiply it by the actual that you manufactured. So then that tells us, well, this is how many we thought we were gonna need, 990 hours. So I hope this video has helped you class. Make sure that you go through it probably a couple times to help you out. All right, I hope to see you back again soon.